That is Kevin Talbert and Colleen Roberts. All right, so uh, first question is, uh, same question that a couple of the state representatives received. Please identify and explain your specific experience or background that you feel uniquely qualifies you to serve as county commissioner. It doesn't matter. Same question for both of you. So. Okay. Um, I guess my skill set for county commissioner involves both my experience and my education. And I've had over 20 years of, as a business owner in Southern Oregon, born and raised in Southern Oregon, and doing business in a community, um, collaborating, working together through all the ups and downs of the economy. We've lived through several, navigating through all the regulation of government and business. Uh, my, my degree is in business. It is a master's degree in business administration, and um, it fits perfectly for county commissioner. It is the, it is the business of our county. Um, my second skill set is that I believe wholeheartedly live, walk, and talk that our government is a, a government for, of, and by the people. And I will be a representative for you, for, of, and by you, not of the government. And finally, um, I, I bring um, experience in the commissioner meetings. I have gone, I ran for county commissioner in 2012 and have attended nearly every commissioner meeting since. And I've been a correspondent for a local paper uh, translating the business of the county to the readers of the um, Upper Road at the Independent. And that's been a real um, honor and privilege to be able to do to, to keep the citizens informed of what's going on with the county government. And I put that all together to work it for the people for your uh, for your freedom. All right, thank you. Well, first, uh, thanks to the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce, and thanks to all of you coming out on a Friday night. I mean, there right. They have to be more fun things to do in Southern Oregon. But uh, you're here, and I think you're here because you care about us. You care about our county. You care about our region, and, and uh, I care about it too. So, in terms of qualifications uh, for this, uh, I was at Southern Oregon University for 26 years uh, in management positions. I've managed uh, complex public sector budgets. I've been on the board at Rural Community College for 11 years, managing uh, the $45 million budget that invests in our youth and also in the continuing education and retraining of a lot of our workforce. I'm currently the president of the Oregon Community College Association, uh, meeting almost monthly with 17 community college presidents, talking about how can education uh, can benefit our communities and how the colleges can better serve and uh, help bring the, the, the economy forward. Uh, I, I've been involved with dozens of different community organizations. I believe in public and private partnerships, which I think is what the county has to do. The county has to connect with local chambers of commerce and So Ready and the Southern Oregon Visitor Association and all of the other organizations that people come together and try to move things forward to provide a healthier economy. So uh, I've got the red card. I'll stop there. <laughs> Hold on to that if you would, please. Uh, the next question is for you as well. Um, similar question to, um, uh, to what the state representatives received. Uh, we talked about the unemployment numbers before. Here in the Rogue Valley, it's, it's quite high at 8.5%. What is your vision uh, and or plan to bring unemployment down and foster living wage jobs here in the Rogue Valley? Well, I'm kind of picking up where, where I left off. I, 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 the county can't solve our unemployment or our employment issues alone. What the county can do is to work with other organizations to try to attract businesses here, to help businesses that are here expand, to uh, try to make sure that we prepare a workforce that's needed by businesses if they're going to be here in Southern Oregon. So the, the, the county really has to be a, a collaborator and a partner. And it's a stark difference between me and my opponent. If you don't think the government, county government should be involved in this, then uh, you know, you'll hear from my opponent that the government is a problem. But I think government can help. Can't, can't be the solution. Private business is the, the, the engine that drives our economy. But government can partner with it, whether it's uh, developing some kind of a, a, a conference center here or making uh, uh, the barriers to businesses growing or expanding uh, be moderated, making sure that we listen to what the concerns are and helping people understand we can recruit people here. 
So uh, I, I believe that county government can be an active partner in, in uh, helping our, our local economy. All right, thank you. And, and what's the question exactly? It, it was about unemployment. Uh, here in the Rogue Valley, it's eight and a half percent. What is your vision or plan to bring uh, unemployment down and foster living wage jobs here in the Rogue Valley? Well, I indeed believe the government is not the answer. Um, my opponent's been working decades preparing a workforce that we've heard isn't meeting the need. And, and yet they still think that to throw more government is the answer to all of our problems. And I just feel, when you look at what the government is doing, they uh, want to make an enterprise zone so certain businesses can come here and be attracted here. And they want to, I've heard um, conversation that they want to freeze um, the property taxes for, for the people on fixed incomes and elderly. And I think, why, why are we creating, a, identifying a problem in our communities of work or taxes, and then we're trying to find a loophole for a few that we can, and can throw it to. I say, make, I'm for small government, small, smarter government, where our government gets out of the way and everybody is on the same playing field. We all have the same advantage with our property taxes, and we all have the same advantage to start a business. I've started a business, and, and it wasn't done through the government, and it wasn't done through um, mandatory minimum wage. Um, we have our minimum wage in, in Oregon, but they're trying to increase it. You know where that cost goes? It goes to the consumer, and the consumers um, are not working. So I think we need to get um, the government out of the way, less restriction, less taxes, less fees, get our people uh, working back, uh, uh, getting our natural resources uh, harvested, our woods for our safety and our health and our welfare. And it will balance. It will be a great blend and a positive a return of government being small and the private sector growing. All right, thank you. There we go. So we're now going to ask the similar questions to uh, Jackson County um, Commissioner candidates for position one. And I just want to know if there is, I believe, one more candidate. Is that correct, Kurt Chancellor? Uh, yes. He's not here tonight. Uh, so there are four names on the ballot. Three are here represented. So uh, we'll start with the uh, question we've heard a few times before. Please identify and explain your specific experience or background that you feel uniquely qualifies you to serve as county commissioner. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tanya Morrow. Um, a lot of you heard this um, about myself. Uh, my, my background includes um, practicing law here in Medford for 24 years. Um, in doing that, I've had the privilege of serving individuals, businesses, nonprofits, and I actually was counsel to several local governments in the community. I was uh, city attorney for, general, general counsel, city attorney for Talent, Gold Hill, and Shady Cove back in the 90s, as well as special counsel for the city of Jacksonville. I was just doing land use for the city of Jacksonville back in the 90s. Um, given that practice, it provides some, some unique skills. Um, those include the ability uh, on a daily basis um, to engage in critical thinking, um, negotiations and advocacy. Um, I have experience of having a fiduciary and ethical duties to all of those that I've served over the last 24 years. Um, and I have the courage to engage in diverse viewpoints and opposing viewpoints and to stand up when necessary um, to, to advocate for the cause. Um, the, the, the role of county commissioner is a lot about policy, and that's a lot about law, and I believe with that background I can hit the job, or hit the ground running, and that will give me time to get out in the community, to engage the community, which is what I'd like to do. All right, thank you. Mr. Dyer. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm going to apologize in advance. I am a little under the weather tonight. I'm trying to get this bug that's going around. Actually, I'm trying not to, but I think it's getting the better of me. Uh, I'll start with my background. Uh, first of all, I have about 25 years in local business in Southern Oregon. Uh, about 15 of which I, I ran local car dealerships, which meant I managed between 50 and 75 employees, multi-million dollar budgets, uh, several departments, uh, and the day-to-day -day, uh, operating business decisions, policy decisions of a large company. The last six and a half years, uh, I opened my own construction business. Not my best idea as far as timing, but I will say, if you know anything about the construction trade the last six years, it's been very difficult. Uh, but I can say that my, my business has been profitable uh, for the last six and a half years because I have been able to manage my budget well and make good business decisions, which I think is an important attribute uh, for a county commissioner. 
uh, I want to hurry up here. My education, I have a business uh, a degree in business administration and accounting from SOU, and in 2007 I decided to go back to law school, which I did while I was running my business, uh, coaching my kids, uh, serving on the RBTD board, uh, and, and lots of other activities. I put 25 to 30 hours in studying, uh, reading law books, writing essays. Long story short, uh, in four years I graduated the top third of my class, and then I pa passed the most difficult bar exam in the country, sitting in the same room as folks that graduated from Stanford, from UCLA, from USC Law School, and I passed it on my first attempt, but almost half of them failed. So I'm able to take on complex tasks, I'm able to set difficult goals and achieve them. And again, I think those are important or attributes for a county commissioner. Well, thank you. Mr. Ankerberg. Uh, good evening. I think if you all look at the County Commissioner website, you'll see that the stated job for the Commissioner is to do the planning, formation, implementation of the county budget, and also to sit on various boards with fiscal authority over your tax dollars. Now, I'm Kurt Ankerberg, CPA. Uh, I've been a CPA 30 years, and at 30 year time, I've been a, uh, a financial auditor for international CPA firms. I've been a senior tax manager, including for Moss Adams locally. I've been a chief financial officer. And for the last 10 years, I've owned my own CPA practice. Um, I've worked for and managed two of the 10 largest CPA firms in the United States. I've had thousands of business clients, from small mom-and-pop clients to large multi-billion dollar corporations. So I think my experience in what the county commissioner does is the most uh, attuned to what the commissioner does, a uh, heavy financial background. I think I'm uniquely qualified more than any other candidate. Thank you. Hold on to that. Next question is for you as well, Mr. Ankerberg. Uh, we talked about the unemployment rate here in the Rogue Valley. It's close to 8.5%. What is your vision and your plan to bring unemployment down and foster living wage jobs here in the Rogue Valley? Well, I think, first of all, the unemployment rate of 8% is awfully low. I think it's probably closer to 15 or 16%. And particularly when you consider a lot of people that are underemployed. But I think that for me, I'm an educated person. For people that are educated, uh, I don't think it's too hard for us to get a job and to get a well paying job. But it's for the people that aren't educated. And I think that's the biggest um, pitfall in the Rogue Valley is that a lot of people are not educated. Um, I'm very involved in the Medford School District. Their most recent math test scores for the last uh, 13, 14 year. For the entire third grade through 11th grade, the math test scores were only 58%. That's 58% of every kid that took uh, the math test failed, or pardon me, 42% failed, only 58% passed. Then we look at SOU is a very poor school, doesn't offer san, uh, science and math classes, technology classes. We need to change that. We need to change SOU into a STEM school. We need to lower regulations, taxes, licenses, and fees to make it easier for business to operate, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say right now. Thank you. Well, I, I think uh, we need to take up all of the above to, to jobs and the economy in this valley. First of all, getting people back to work in the woods to whatever extent is possible, I think is important, especially to our rural areas, our rural schools. Uh, they're suffering more than just about uh, anyone else in this valley. Also, I'm, I'm also a big believer um, in, in the tech industry. We do have a lot of very successful tech uh, companies here, and we have the, the proper infrastructure for them. Uh, and we do have uh, SOU and RCC that can adapt and, and train uh, employees to do this job well. Uh, and I think we need to have a more focused approach and an approach where we're actually going out instead of just saying, you know, putting the word out there that, hey, we're a great place to, to live and work, let's go find these, these companies. Let's go actually send somebody to, to, to talk to them and to say, hey, come up, let's see, let me show you what Southern Oregon Jackson County has to offer. And when somebody comes up here and they see what we have, uh, as opposed to where they are, I think we can attract a lot of living wage jobs, jobs that pay between one and a half and two times our median income, which has a multiplier effect. Each one of those jobs can create up to four or more jobs, and that's the way we really grow our economy. We can, we can expand on tourism. Uh, I, I, I believe that a convention center or a conference center is a good investment and a, and a good thing for uh, county government to be involved in. Our viticulture industry is also something we can expand on. I guess I just got the red card, so I better stop. <laughs> 
Well, um, economic and community development are the reasons I'm, I decided to jump into this race. So I, I, I believe in, in supporting most efforts as well, but I have been talking about focusing on three particular areas. Um, those include, um, as um, Representative Buckley mentioned, uh, agriculture. I believe Kevin Calver mentioned it too. We have a unique opportunity to um, attract and just a new investment investment either from outside or inside in um, local food production and organic um, in particular and, and, and to grow our seed, our seed industry here. Um, the other one is um, working and I'm already, already working on a, with a group to ramp up our transition to clean energy. Um, there's a group of community um, people in the energy community and businesses that are already working on, on this and I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to put some people to work and to keep some of our money here. The third area is high tech as well. I've been meeting with um, some of those those uh, hundred or so, well, uh, a few of those hundred or so um, employers in the valley that are in the high tech industry and we, we meet on a weekly basis and we talk about the needs for um, planning, strategic planning to make sure that we have sufficient and accessible broadband as well as that we are focusing on things that will bring uh, innovation like hack labs and uh, co-working spaces. And so those are three areas I'd like to particularly focus on. Thanks. All right. Thank you. I feel this process of being elected to office as a job interview. How well do you think you've done tonight? And that is for county commissioner candidates. <laughs> Uh, that's for the voters to decide. I'm kind of disappointed, though. I thought there'd be more people here. It seems like there's a lot of apathy in the Rogue Valley. When we had our <clears throat> debate in Eagle Point, it was a small showing. When we had our debate last week in Medford, it was a small showing. And it's just disappointing for me, as a candidate, that very few people are really concerned with what goes on in the government. So, I don't know how well I did. It's for you to decide. But uh, anyway. All right, so hold on for a second. There's a follow-up question, so everyone will get the same question. Um, how do you do tonight? Thank you. And then the next question, because you just addressed it, um, was... It was, how do you... The question was, how, how do you uh, energize voters to get them to come out to events like this and, and get them to see your positions? How, how can we do a better job of that? I don't think it's the candidate's job to ener energize people. I think it's the voter's job to be interested in uh, civics and what affects them in their daily lives. How did you do and how can you energize me? Well, I can tell you, I, I feel like I'm more, usually more often uh, more articulate than I was earlier tonight, but I think I did articulate what it is that um, has driven me to jump into this race. Um, but as to the second issue, the community development part is near and dear to my heart too. I too feel like we have a community that's by and large disengaged and I think businesses want good government and they want to see a community that is engaged and is inspired and is um, feeling empowered and so again my experience I think will allow me to, to hit the job running. I don't, I know policy, I know how to do those day-to-day -day affairs with the, the commissioner and this will give me the opportunity to get out into the community and start organizing. like. The, um, the opportunity I'm engaged in right now with regard to transitioning to clean energy, working with community leaders to get together at the table and figuring out what the hurdles are so that we can start ramping up the process and getting some of that efficiency work done so we can do some renovations to our homes, put people to work. And um, so that is a, that's an important goal of mine, to, to get out there in the, community, in the community and make sure that the county government is accountable to everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? 
Um, well, how I did tonight. You know, I've never had a one and a half minute job interview. <laughs> you can hardly get out half of what you're thinking and believe in, in such short answers. But um, we did our best. I, I'm the only candidate um, up here before you that has actually been through the primary. Um, it, is a, it is a decision of the voters. And in the primary, I did win. I'm a registered Republican. I won the Republican nomination for this position. And there wasn't a Democrat on the ballot. And so the write-in votes carried a lot of weight. And uh, my opponent in his own Democrat party got 30 write-in votes. And I got 10 times that amount. And I just think the voice of freedom, accountability, and a, a representative for you carries across party lines. And um, that, that message will be determined in the general election now. And that's where we're headed. So I appreciate you listening to our short, quick answers. And, and uh, that is why I feel like I've done a job to get here at this point today. And how I energize voters? Um, I think social media is awesome. I've uh, used it a lot in my campaign, telling them where I'm at, what I'm doing, what is being said. And it's amazing the power of the social media. And I think it'll be a great tool, even as commissioner, to to communicate with um, the citizens one-on-one um, -on -one and on the internet. It's it's a great uh, opportunity. Well, I do teach a, a management class for the University of Oregon. We talk about uh, you know what what makes management or how can you manage an organization to make sure it's performing at a high level and. Uh, I, um, if I were evaluating myself tonight, I'd say oh, it's about a C. I kind of uh, <laughs> kind of feel like we didn't get a chance really to talk about our vision for the county and uh, a lot of things that, that are that are noted in my mind and other other candidates' minds. So it's, there's there's too many of us and uh, too little time, I think, to to really get get that out there. Um, I think in terms of energizing, I liked what uh, my uh, opponent said about social media. I think that's good. But I, I would point to uh, Don Skunderick, uh, one of our current commissioners, and say, you know, of all the commissioners that I've observed, I think he has done the best job uh, with his uh, community forums. And, uh, you know, he goes out and tries to meet with city councils at all of our incorporated communities. He tries to get out and go to different civic organizations and be at the table and get to know the people who are governing local communities. And uh, I, I think that does energize people because they know that their county commissioners are informed in trying to get to know the people that are grappling with the difficult problems. Just the city, Phoenix uh, mayoral candidates and city council people, you can see that these are complex issues. And uh, anybody who's standing for office or in office ha ha has to be informed. And so. Uh, I'd like to energize people by getting out and uh, going to the communities where people are grappling with hard decisions. All right, thank you.